Item number SCP-3934. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. A part of 58 update 59 SCP-3934 instances is currently contained within Lake Baikong in Site 220's Parasonology Reserve, known publicly as the Bai Hayes Natural Reserve. Note, founded in 1963, Site 220 serves as one of two headquarters for the Foundation's Parasonology Division, the other being Area 12. 48 of the more docile anomalous fauna species are contained within its 163 square kilometer reserve. Foundation parasonologists are to ensure that all specimens receive adequate nutrition and health care, and are also responsible for overseeing a breeding program designed to minimize inbreeding-related genetic defects within the population. Bodies of deceased instances are to be disposed of via cremation, following standard testing and examination procedures. Reports of uncontained SCP-3934 instances, whether feral or domestic, are to be investigated by members of MTF-52. Clever girls. Should a live instance be discovered, it is to be brought unharmed to the nearest Foundation facility. From there, transportation will be arranged to Site-220. To prevent accidental injury to personnel or the instance, only members of 5-2 or other staff experienced in working with Mesozoic reptiles are to interact with the instance prior to its arrival at the reserve. Description SCP-3934 is a species of amphibious reptiles produced via anonymous means by Marshall Carter and Doc Limited. Instances of SCP-3934 classified as Plesiosaurus pygmaeus grow to only just over half the size of other Plesiosaurs, with adult males averaging 1.9 meters in length and adult females averaging 1.7 meters. Specimens are omnivorous and subsist on a diet of fish and aquatic flora. Though created anonymously, SCP-3934 instances do not possess any anomalous biological features or adaptations. SCP-3934 were originally created in the early 20th century by MCND with the intent to sell instances as exotic pets or aquarium denizens. The exact processes used to accomplish this are unknown. Note, researchers theorized a link between SCP-3934 and previous MCND activity regarding specimens of Dinosauria. But instances have confirmed to share nearly identical skeletal structures with historical plesiosaurs, with the obvious exception of size. Following their success, MCND used viral marketing tactics to create a demand for the specimen. Starting in 1933 and continuing for the next two decades, MCND staff leaked images and stories of SCP-3934 to the media, the most famous example of which is the 1934 surgeon's photo. The campaign was a success, and international fascination with the Loch Ness Monster phenomenon resulted in further attention. MCND capitalized on the legend's popularity to sell specimens to numerous wealthy individuals of noble or industrial background in both Europe and the United States. Between 1935 and the present, an estimated 1,200 to 1,400 SCP-3934 instances have been created and sold. Pricing is believed to have averaged approximately data redacted US dollars per specimen in modern currency. SCP-3934 are highly social animals, both with members of their own species and with humans. Seized internal MCND documents relate that their behavioral patterns are modeled after Labrador retriever canines in order to facilitate customer satisfaction and safety. However, while their temperament was conductive to the status of pets, the effort required to care for them was not. Due to the size and altered biology, specimens required a specialized diet, a marine habitat at least 
1 million litres in volume and frequent specialised medical care. Many buyers could not provide these conditions, which resulted in the vast majority of SCP-3934 instances dying or being abandoned within two years of purchase. This outcome was likely planned obsolescence on the part of MCND as it encouraged repeat purchases of infant instances to replace dead or unwieldy adults. Abandoned or wild-born instances of SCP-3934 often react with uncharacteristic violence towards humans and other mammals. A higher degree of carnivorous predation and territoriality are also common attributes of these feral specimens. In at least three cases, multiple feral instances made it to form wild parts. The largest of these was located in Lake Champlain, where six feral specimens resided prior to their containment. Note, SCP-3933-EX was originally theorized to be one of these uncontained parts, though this was later proven to be false. Through specialized behavioral conditioning, Foundation peristologists have created a 73% success rate in rehabilitating inferior specimens. Addendum Discovery Prepared by the Department of External Affairs Subject Discovery and Recovery of SCP-3934-1 Involved Agent Level 3 Agent Cyrus Fielding Level 2 Agent Tobias Rourke Level 2 Agent Alistair Berlin and Level 1 Trainee Agent Sean Doherty. Report The first instance of SCP 3934 known to the Foundation was discovered in the home of Joseph Cartwell, a noted British financier and philanthropist, on September 19, 1951. Cartwell was a known customer of MCND, and a raid has been organized to seize anomalous assets while he was away on business. A containment team consisting of agents Fielding, Warwick, Byrne, and Cheney O'Duherty was sent to explore the premises and confiscate any anomalous artifacts discovered. Below is a transcript of O'Duherty's early model body camera feed during the raid. Material irrelevant to SCP-3934 has been removed. Begin Log the team is crouched behind a hedgerow. Fielding issue final instructions. All right, you lot. Stay sharp in there. You never know what kinds of impossible lopish lying around in a customer's house. That goes to for you, Doherty. I lost good men the night before this before. I don't intend to lose any today. Um, sir? It's, uh, it's actually old Doherty, sir. Easy, lad. A time to piss himself is during the mission, not before that. Give it, kid of S. Toby. I recall you nearly follow that advice in New York last year. Enough, move in! The team approaches the railed house, and Burton kicks open his side entry. He proceeds through the kitchen and finds himself in an open living area. Hmm. All right, Toby, you want me to do a sweep of upstairs? Oh, you want a kid? Check the ground floor and enclosed pool. Uh, should we, uh, should we really split up? Well, don't you sound chuffed about it. And we don't have any of the time, you know. Speed can be safety at times like these. Now, come on. The group of fights in the two, and agents Byrne and O'Duherty proceed to search the kitchen, foyer, and then, while finding nothing of interest, the two of them make their way to the enclosed pool area. Well, Booker, it looks like the whole night is going to be a damp script after all. Not that I should be complaining. Yeah, at least no. Wait, there's something in the water. An instance of SCP-3934 surfaces two meters from the pier and watches them without approaching. Old to Hurdy lets out a surprised yelp. Well, Burden draws his weapon but doesn't fire. What the bloody frick is this thing? Both parties remain motionless for several seconds. Before the remaining two team members arrive on scene, SCP-3934-1 retreats farther from the group at their arrival. Daddy, we heard your... What an else? Is that a freaking Loch Ness monster? 
What you ever this? I'll take a reach and what's in what at the fair. What are your orders, sir? We need to get it out of the water before we can say date it. Any ideas, gents? Agent O'Dehurdy leaves the room without a word and returns several seconds later with a fish. When I searched the ice box early as there were fish in it, I looked at each them and the beastie looks underfed as it is. Oh dear. I, uh, I used to work in an animal shelter as a teenager. Uh, this things are showing some familiar signs. You can see its bones pushing against the skin. Poor thing looks knackered. Oh, to her, he leans over the pool and beckons with the fish, and while speaking in soft and even tones, slowly, SCP-39341 moves closer before beginning to eat the fish out of Odehurdy's hand. Specimen seems hesitant at first, but quickly gains enthusiasm. After consuming the fish, it moves forward and begins to nuzzle Odehurdy's leg with its neck. The hell? Good beastie. Look, give me another fish, and I think I can coax it out of the water. As Warwick leaves the room, SCP-39341 briefly submerges before returning with the ball held in its mouth. It then moves towards the pool's edge and deposits the ball in front of Old Hurdy. Old Hurdy then throws the ball towards the other end of the pool. Warwick returns just as SCP-39341 promptly retrieves the ball and swims back to Old Hurdy. Lad, do you just play fetch with a damn luckless monster? End of.